Step one, learn to pronounce laser. Why does it have to be an AC welder? Aluminum actually has an oxide layer on top of it. It's kind of like the rust for steel, as you will. So if you were just to weld on top of that, you wouldn't get a good weld. So you got to break that apart to be able to get down into the weld. Having an AC welder actually does that. On the positive cycle, it actually is a cleaning action. You see that layer of frost, which I'll call it. So you got to break that down to get down to the base material. And then on the negative cycle, that's what's actually doing the heating and penetrating, getting you that weld. Now, since we're using the AC, most machines give you a couple extra features like your balance. That is how much of that positive cycle or negative cycle you want to use. And there's also frequency, which as you can imagine, is the number of cycles per second that it will go through. And there's lots of machines like my ESOB that have those and like 10 other plus adjustments that you can do. Now, I think that is where tons of people get bogged down and just kind of get overwhelmed with aluminum because there was too much to choose from. So really, if you're just starting out, well, I'll tell you right now, for balance, go 30% and your frequency, stick between 90 and 120. If you don't even want to think about any of that, you can pick up a cheaper Harbor Freight Titanium a TIG 200. This, there's no settings. They've actually got it all programmed in there for you. So it's just a plug and play. So downside is you don't have those adjustments. Plus side is you don't have to think about all those adjustments. I'm actually going to be doing all of these tests or all of the welds you're seeing in this video are done with the Titanium TIG 200. The torch setup. Now I know everybody loves and is rolling with these big old, you know, 10, 12 number size cups, the larger ones. And that's great for steel. If you are doing aluminum, just trust me, go with a smaller, like a five or a six. Now, most machines actually torches come with these longer ones, which I'm not really quite sure because you would think they'd be more expensive to produce, but either way, uh, these work great as well. You just don't get as much control out of your hand because it's a lot longer as you would with a stubby kit. So highly suggest getting a stubby gas lens kit with at least a number five cup. The gas is an easy one. No way around it. it needs to be 100% argon. Now, yes, there's a couple other variations. We're not going to dive into that. Just... Pick up the common 100% argon. Your C25 mix that you've been MIG welding with will not work. Now, since I am using a number five cup, I'm gonna set my CFH or the flow rate to about 12 to 15. Need some tungsten? Well, I'll tell you what, there are a rainbow of colors for tungsten. And yes, it does matter, but not for what you think. Most people ask, what color do you need to do a certain material? It's actually what color do you need for the polarity you're running. We got AC, so pick a color that can do that. You'll be great. I like using the freaking laser beam. It's just a certain brand's style or color. They call it the chartreuse. I don't know what color that is. It's like a lime green puke color. Who cares? What matters is it can run on AC and I got 330 seconds and I guarantee that size will probably work for 99% of the projects you've got going. Now you're gonna dip the tungsten in the weld puddle, guarantee. There's no way around it. And that's because you actually wanna get as close as you can without touching it to get a good weld. So I actually like chopping these suckers in half then grinding both ends. Then you've got a nice stockpile for easy switch out for when you do dip it, which will happen. The length also works great with a stubby gas lens. Now sticking with that 332nd inch theme, 332nd, 332nd inch, I am gonna go with some ER 4043 aluminum rod. You know, if you don't know by now, you gotta add your filler material. If you're here for the basics, well, you're in the wrong class. Check out my last video where I go over TIG 101. Now, finally, on to what you actually came here for, the welding portion. Now, I've got, you know, some little aluminum plates. Practicing your starts is good because you need to be patient and wait until that oxide layer is broken down before you actually start moving and laying down the filler material and your bead. It's good to practice at which speed that happens. The pros, 
not me, are able to stomp down on the pedal and get going within a second. I usually take my time and hey, I mean it's kind of mesmerizing to actually watch the weld form. If you are brand new, you will want to do more than just one plate, so keep at it. I'm moving on to the little cutoffs that I have for my square tubing, which I will be doing later on for my project. So, starting up with tacking them in the corners, just like with steel. Adding little tacks on each piece to hold it in place until we do the full bead. Starting with a higher amperage and then tapering off towards the end. You'll also notice that some welds require less amperage and some don't even require any filler material, like this corner weld. Nice and low gets you that perfect corner. Now the opposite side would be the fillet weld, which takes a lot more heat amperage and you'll definitely need to add in the filler material. Now I'm surprised no one's mentioned the noise yet. TIG welding on AC is loud. I was a little freaked out by it the first time I heard it, but that is totally normal for AC TIG welding. I'm Megmaster, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.